Welcome to Hard Way Wrestling. It is Wednesday. Waist lock Wednesday, baby. Oh, nobody oh. likes a waist lock. Oh. Get the butts. <laughs> <laughs> Did we do it right, Ricky? Could you tell? You were both going in the same direction. <laughs> you go left and I go right. Not you go right, I go left. Your other left, and it's still not right. And you're still going left. <laughs> Whatever. You guys suck. <laughs> Whatever. I'll tell you what. I fuck his ass and make him humble. <laughs> All right. Let's get a couple things out. First off, welcome, boys. Ricky, uh, Hardy, how are, is it okay if I just call you Hardy? I don't like Brian. Yeah, it's cool, man. A weird name. I like Hardy. Yeah, it's cool. F with the best hair in the business, second generation sensation, Brian Hardy. And Tricky Ricky wearing the ugliest shirt I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, fuck you. Yeah. It's a hockey night. Hey, that's the fourth time today somebody said that to me. I'm For never I'll never call my mom again, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> let's get a let's get some business out of the way. Did she uh, humble you? We I can't do it. I, I, so first, we have hit a hundred downloads. We have been doing uh the podcast version on uh, on Spotify and, and uh, iTunes and Google Play and, and everywhere else. We've only been doing that for what now? Two weeks? Something like that, I think. Two weeks, uh, Two three weeks. which is about 10, 10, 15, 10 episodes. Of life. We've hit 100 downloads. I don't know what that means, but I'm pretty excited that there's a hundred, at least 100 downloads. Right? That's so awesome. Th that's a new platform for us that we just jumped on. We're, we're, uh, we're getting close to our 200th video uh, on YouTube, so that's awesome too. So we are now at 143 subscribers on YouTube. We picked up another one today. I don't know if somebody somebody's cat accidentally walked across their their computer and hit subscribe. Was it, was it my cat? Thank you. Was it my cat? Was it your? Was your <laughs> is your cat? I don't even know where he's at. I don't well, know. He's, he's not up he's here. He's coming on to the. He's waiting for his his uh his other camera. Probably, but I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while. Uh oh. Yeah. Well, check the cat box, buddy. You'll, nah, you'll he's see not him back. Soon. He's not you'll, back there. You'll see him soon enough. All right. <laughs> so, uh, we're again. We're almost at 200 uh, videos on YouTube. We've been doing this since March, uh, and we our next goal is 150, and we are seven away. We are going to get there. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get there by the end of the month before whew, November uh, rolls in. But we couldn't do it without you guys, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And again, Brian, thank you for being here. Ricky, thank you for being here. I appreciate everything you guys do. Uh, you guys add a lot of uh, different elements for sure. Ricky's got his own uh, way of thinking for sure. And Brian, well, you're a mess. But <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate everything you guys do. Uh, our last video on YouTube, uh, between the, the live got almost – 200 views awesome the replay got almost 68 to 70 views so we are almost at 300 views on just that video alone if you guys did not catch it you missed it brian hardy went off he did the best iron chic that that i i don't yeah, know go to the 137 was. 137 moment yeah, don't right. tell don't tell people that man i watched an interview the oh, other day with um i think it was chris van vliet and carrie and cross where carrie cross does like a really mean jesse ventura impression i've seen that that's and he good. said like everybody just stops him now and says like do the thing dude do the thing you know? yeah i've seen that he's good yeah he, uh carrie cross does uh a couple other different impressions uh but he is um he he is uh he he's really good but it, Back to the, I mean, honestly, back to the real, real deal. Uh, we were, uh, I mean, we had a pretty good, we were an hour and hour and 40 minutes into a video, hour and 30 some minutes. And I, we, we were doing trivia, uh, which that's exactly where our spike was uh, for viewership was the trivia. Everybody kind of dug that. 
and Brian went into uh, we all I guess we all went into like our Iron Cheek impression, and then Brian. <laughs> I think I've watched in. that about like a hundred times since last week. I, I am out of control. I cannot. And I'm stop. like crying I'm, every time because just <laughs> laughing so damn hard. I have not got a chance. To, I'm gonna clip it and put it up as its own little short. Uh, but if you have not seen it. Don't watch. Well, you know what? Whatever, whatever. Watch the whole video. It's cool. Don't go to that. Watch the whole video. But if you want to go right to the 136, 137 mark, uh, Brian uh, just goes off with his Iron Sheik impression and we lose it. Like we absolutely <laughs> lose it. it is, yeah. Uh, I don't know if we were all just tired or whatever, but it was fucking great. It was epic. So yeah. I fucked your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm. Of course, I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up on this computer. I'm downstairs. I told my girlfriend, I was like, "Hey, you gotta watch this. You gotta watch me." Fast forward <laughs> uh, on our TV, and she goes, "I, I don't get it." I'm like, "I don't get it." And I broke up with her because she didn't laugh. So, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> uh, Brian, uh, you had been working on that impression for a while, or it just came to you? Uh, my whole entire life. I, I was like one of the many that went out and bought that shoot interview back in 07. And <laughs> fuck the Ted DiBiase, you know, like all that stuff and everything. So I was like, yeah, um, I do others too. I mean, I don't want to do them right now, but I do Dusty Roads. I do like a bunch of other people and stuff. So I'm like, yeah, eventually you'll feel them come out here and there. So we're going to, uh, well, baby, we're going to do a Dusty Road sometime. We got the. <laughs> We got the Duffy Rose Tag Team Tournament coming up. We're oh, sweet sapphire, baby. Sweet sapphire. <laughs> Funky like a monkey. All right. Funky like a monkey, baby. Uh, yeah, we could. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to have to do an impression show for sure. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, I mean, I always liked the Iron Sheik. Like most people liked the Iron Sheik back in the day. Well, actually, Americans didn't. But I liked it. I liked the <laughs> uh, Iron Sheik. One of the greatest uh, yeah. heels of all time. He uh, he made quite the resurgence when he went on to Howard Stern, and uh, they had a, they had um, I think it was Artie Lang that was uh, I think it was Artie that was doing Iron Chi or uh, doing um, Macho Man impression or whatever or whoever's impression he was doing, and and, uh, and Iron Chi just went absolutely crazy. <laughs> Be Brian Blair. <laughs> that on that. All right. So, boys, we got a couple of topics to cover today. Cover today. Uh, we will not be here the rest of the week. Uh, if anything pops up, uh, we'll definitely do a pizza cutter news or something like that. Uh, but uh, this is the looks busy. like you already took the pizza cutter to the dome. I did. Uh, this is my uh, this is my Don Callis look. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Wrong I, side. Uh, there you go. I was. Uh, yeah, it's over there. There it is. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so uh, if anything comes up, we'll jump on here. But most likely, uh, there won't be another video the rest of the week. So we're going to have to make this one super special. So uh, we got some news. Uh, we got CM Punk. Uh, we got Nick Aldis. We got we're going to do an impact pay-per-view uh, 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 preview. Do you watch impact, Brian? I have I was a huge Impact fan back in the day, but I have not kept up with it in recent years. And I, I still have some friends that work over there, Eddie Edwards and stuff like that. But um, I haven't kept up with it in a while. Can yeah, you get him on here? <laughs> I don't know. We could call Eddie. We could call yeah, Eddie sometime. Listen, can you just do it right now? Can you just? I mean, it just just make a phone call. <laughs> show us your phone, Brian. Show us your phone. Uh, show us Eddie Edwards on your phone, and uh, I will reach in and. Start. I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna start clicking random people. Just we'll start. It. We'll we'll start calling people from the past. We'll call. Um, you got Adam Pierce, right? You got, you I was got gonna the say, shake. we you got, got just right here on my phone. We've got Shane Douglas, Julio De Niro. Uh, we've got the Sandman. We've got Gilberg. We've got um, Gilberg. Oh Jesus! Get Nunzi Gilberg Nunzio. on. You got to get Gilberg on here and Jeremy Stone at the same time. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably think they're looking in a mirror. Oh, believable. That's his dad. <laughs> That's Gilbert's dad is Jeremy Stone. <laughs> his West Virginia brother. You never know, man. All right. Well, let, let's uh let's start this off. Uh Mark Henry's just on a podcast. Uh the bump. Was it the bump? 
what was it? Uh, what the podcast was that? I just had it up here. I think I got rid of it because it upset me. You mean uh, we're talking about it. CM Punk again? Uh, you know what? He, he, uh, Oh, it was uh, Booker T's podcast. That's what it was. It was on Booker T's podcast. Um, yeah, so, yeah, because CM Punk moves the needle still, even though he's not wrestling. Uh, CM Punk moved yeah. the needle for seven years while he was out of the business, right? Because he was coming back every week. CM sure. Punk was coming back. Anytime they went to Chicago, chance of CM Punk. So uh, Mark Henry, the strongest, uh, world's strongest man, said on uh, the Booker T podcast that uh, just because CM Punk was set in his ways doesn't doesn't mean that's a bad thing. And uh, there were a lot of rumors out there that CM Punk tried to keep younger talent down. And uh, uh, Mark Henry said, that's not the truth. CM Punk tried to raise these guys up, tried to make them better. And uh, a couple, some of the talent did not appreciate that. So, Ricky, I know you're uh, you're not the biggest CM Punk fan here. Does this change your, does this change your opinion on CM Punk at all? I mean, uh, it, no. it, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I'm just I'm uh, as as much as I think that all that bullshit was going on with uh with the elite and and the back and forth and the, with Tony Khan now Tony Khan scared to death he's of uh, his own shadow. Um, do you think that it is now bad that CM Punk is not in AEW? I mean, it, it's definitely hurting their sales on tickets and their attendance to their shows. Yeah. I mean, you could that that's been obvious since he's been gone. I mean, right after that Wembley show, you used, I mean, before that, you had like sold out collisions every week. Um, the the product of the show was definitely better. Uh, now t- they t- did have sell out the tickets. The ticket sales were great, but the TV ratings were not. The well, yeah, that's on that. But yeah, I'm yeah, Punk definitely. Uh, he made a difference being there as, as much as a lot of us don't like him for all the behind the scenes antics, but yeah, he, yeah, it, it's hard to like this guy. Like I like it. Like, like I agree with you. I like his wrestling character. I just hate the person he is. Like he thinks he's bigger than the locker room. And regardless of what Mark Henry's saying, uh, everybody knows of, of his baggage. It's why WWE is, I guess at times considering him bringing him back, but they know the baggage that's going to come with him. Brian, what do you, I mean, do you, do you think this in the, in the long run, is this a detriment or is this, is this bad for AEW that that punk is now gone? I think that, well, for the sake of um, avoiding all the bull crap that would take place in the locker room, the having to make sure this guy is on first and then get him out of the building and get this guy on because they don't get along and stuff on that end of the spectrum. Fine. Well, everything um, on the end of the spectrum, when it comes to making money, when it comes to viewership, um, all that kind of stuff, it's a complete um, and utter disgrace. Unfortunately that Tony Khan let him go um, because for the sake of business, it just, like I said, nothing against edge, nothing against any of those guys or whatever, but they're not going to pull the ratings that CM Punk was going to pull um, by, by WWE pretty much saying we've already had him once. We don't want him again. Um, I don't know what, what that's going to do. I don't know where that's going to leave him. You know, there's a lot of uh, clickbait online saying that he could end up an impact, um, I'd love to see him end up at USW at least one time against Brian <laughs> Hardy for the USW championship. Never say never, but um, I don't, I don't know. I think that I think all around by Mark Henry saying that I think he only made people mad because it goes against the uh, aura that they're trying to build that CM Punk is this incredibly horrible person. And I don't think he's a horrible person. Um, I've met him, like I said, two times and both times he was very cool. So um, I don't, I don't think, I definitely think he would want to help the younger talent and all that kind of stuff. I just think it's unfortunate because the main people, the meat and potatoes of who put AEW together can't get along with him. So because they can't get along with him, it makes the situation tougher. And unfortunately too many cooks in the kitchen, too many chiefs and not enough Indians can tend to be a bad thing for any professional wrestling company. Right, side so, note, side note, yeah. I did I did read that uh, Jungle Boy's indefinite suspension has been up for like a couple weeks now. They're yeah. they're just not rushing to bring him back. Sure. 
All right. So Brian, let's 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 fantasy let's fantasy being let's be an owner here, right? You're an owner, you're at US US. You doing what, is it, what, is it, what, is your, what is your small company called? U U S S W. W. Okay, that's what it is. No A on the end. It's not a Canadian No A. W A. It's hey. not an alliance. It's hey. not an association. Hey. It's not anything. It's just USW. Gotcha. Uh, I give you shit. Uh, one day I'm going to make it on that poster as soon as I fill out all those NDAs you sent me. <laughs> um, <laughs> he sent me, he sent me the other day like six files. I was like, Jesus, I'm going to have to get my lawyer to look at this. Um, but if it you're gonna have if, to get, if, You're going to have to get Damien to cleanse your computer again. If, 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 it, if I end up on a card with uh, stunning. Uh, stunning Adam or stunning. What is his name? Stunning Adam. Stunning Adam Armstrong. And I'm again. I'm gonna learn your roster. I'm gonna learn your roster. All right. So pretend you're the owner. Okay. You okay. have a chance to keep CM Punk. Or yet, knowing if you keep CM Punk, when the Bucks contract comes up, they're probably gonna leave. Kenny Omega's contract comes up. He's probably gonna leave, unless they squash. It. Right, but let's say they don't squash him. Do you, do you keep Punk then? Um, yeah. You're basically trading one for five because Hangman's gone, the Bucks are gone, Kenny's yeah, gone. It, it pains me to say that because I like all those yeah. guys. I've I've never really had like interactions with those guys, but I like those guys. I'm not an Adam Page fan. Never been an Adam Page fan. I actually met him. Um, and he wasn't rude to me or anything like that. I just, he doesn't do anything for me. That sounds terrible. He's, he's, but, he's, he's, he's milk toast. Like he's stale. Yeah. But, yeah, um, the way he wrestles is his personality. Yeah. But I, I love, uh, the bucks. I love Kenny Omega, but when push comes to shove, if I was the guy in control, if I was the money man and I was doing all that stuff, I'd be like CM Punk. Got to do what's best for business. Yep. We're going to um, we're going to make sure that they don't step into catering at the same time you do. We're going to make sure that we have them out of the building before you're in the building. Like I would have jumped through hell in a handbasket to make it work, and I guess that's the difference between me and Tony Khan. I mean, I always said just Tony Khan just should have told them all just squash it now, go to the ring, throw down, get over it. Absolutely, bite each other, whatever you need to do. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah, take it right out back. I mean, literally, just go right where the television trucks are, kick the living shit out of each other, and 15 minutes later, shake hands and just the be The problem over. is, like, all the social media now, like, back in the day, they probably would have already, like, gone to fists in the locker room oh, without sure. having, you know, shit happen. Yeah, but, nowadays, you know, it's, oh, this guy won, or this guy's a win. Like, as soon, as, as, soon as one of them sneezes wrong, like, social media is all over it, and there, there's a bunch of assholes on this Hardway show that are popping up on talking about it, you know. Ready to jump right <laughs> on it, buddy. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, back in the day, that I mean, Scotty brought this up before, let and only because he thinks CM Punk would win, uh, and he obviously and never saw CM him. Punk is his god. Anyway. So, uh, Back in the day, that's what they used to do. If you had a problem with a guy uh, and you couldn't settle it in the ring, right? If you, you gave a guy a receipt and if it went any further than that, then you you, you handled it in the locker room or outside the venue or wherever. Right? Absolutely. Whatever whatever doesn't disrespect uh, your uh, your head booker or your, your, your owner or whatever. So, uh, But it's a different world now. I mean, you can't. Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine CM Punk and Kenny Omega or the Bucks and just – Duking it out. Can you imagine every camera in the world? It'd be world star, bro. It'd be just world I just, star. I, I think honestly, like I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I really do think if they just would have kicked the shit out of each other for real, one good time, shaking hands and went back to work, I think we would have had some of the most killer matches ever between those guys. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to have seen Omega versus Punk. Yeah, uh, and. I always say, I also say something to you. Never say never. It'd be tough to bring CM Punk back ever to AEW since Tony Khan is, I guess he's, he's, he's still kind of Julia Hart's hat. He's kind uh, yeah, of, I think, I think Punk just feels way too disrespected now that I feel like no matter what, he'll, 
I don't know. Like I said, never say never. He, we all thought he would never go back to WWE, but apparently he's open on his end, and they're just not open on their end. Correct. He's not a spring chicken anymore, so I mean, he can't wait seven years and then come back. He's going to be like what sixty? Yeah. Well, Undertaker <laughs> just slammed a guy in the ring, so yeah. Well, that's all he did. I, I think CM Punk brings a lot to the locker room besides chaos at times. I think he brings yeah. a lot to the talent. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Sure he, he really does. is. I mean. I, I, huh. I like to compare he myself. Just has a, he just sometimes. doesn't have a good way of going about it. Yeah. He, I still think, I, I don't know. He's like I said, I like to compare myself to that a lot of times, but I think he's the closest thing we probably got right now to a Terry Funk in the business. Like that's literally willing to look at somebody and go, Oh, I can make that guy. I can make that guy. Let me work with him, please. Like this. Yeah, and but that, did, did Terry Funk ever, ever just start shit just to start shit in a locker room? Did he really? Sorry. It's unfortunate. Um, there's a lot of shoot interviews where you can see um, there's like just one. I, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. There's just one that people would never expect to happen. And I mean, I had both these guys in my locker room before for my company and stuff. And you would never know that this ever took place. Uh, apparently, like back in like 2004 or 2005, maybe maybe before that, a little bit before that. Jerry Lawler. No, no, no. <laughs> when, um, when XPW was up and running. Terry Funk and Shane Douglas had a lot of problems um, where like, apparently there's a story that goes around where Shane had to like literally tell Terry one night during a match, like, Hey, cut the fucking shit. Like seriously cut the shit because like Terry was just like beating him up. And, and at the very end of the deal, um, I think they said that Terry cut his arm with a bottle, like, like a, a beer bottle cut his own arm with a beer bottle and was running around blaming, uh, telling everybody in the back and stuff, Shane Douglas fucking cut me open with this bottle and blah, blah, blah. Like it was bad. Like he like, and he was like, yeah, he's like, and then a few years later, he's like, we were fine. And I'm like, well, they were at my show in 2011 in the same locker room together, talking, hugging, they worked together, all that stuff, like, and no yeah. problem. So I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, Terry was all once again, Every interaction I ever had with Terry, amazing. He's one of my favorites of all time, besides Bret Hart and Hulk Hogan, but and Jerry Lawler. But I, I think the old Funker was crazy at times too. So if that's what we're gonna go off with CM Punk, he's allowed to be a little crazy sometimes. I think too, it's a it's a it's a matter of who you're threatened by. If you're in the locker room, and, and I can see where Shane Douglas is. You know, Shane Douglas has been around now, right? He's I think he's doing some stuff in the in the mid south now. Or down south, he's doing. He's running a promotion. Looks like a studio show that yeah. had less people than ADCW had um, <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, but you could see like two larger than life personalities, and Douglas definitely. I mean, the genius sucked, but Shane Douglas was you know a larger than life. Yeah. Wasn't he the genius? Is that what? No, he wasn't a genius. He was the what was he? Uh, was Dean he, Douglas. No, oh, Dean Douglas. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, boy, they tried to saddle him. They might as well call him the Red Rooster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love Terry Taylor, too. I say good stuff yeah, about I, him in my book. I like Terry Taylor. Ter I, I met him. Where did, I forget. I met him at a convention one time. Super, super nice, chill dude. Um, uh, but two larger than life personalities, especially Terry Funk. Uh, uh, if you're not with th those, those type of people – not demand, but almost, well, they do demand. They demand your attention. They demand when they're talking, you shut up, right? Your yeah. mouth is closed when their mouth is open. And yes. that's, that's an old school thing anyway. When their mouth, you know, uh, open your ears and shut your mouth is what. Uh, what it, it's what so that. true. And and like I said, it's I, I feel that way myself about things a lot of times where I'm literally like, uh, like, I'm not going to say the name of the person because I like, I genuinely like the person a lot. But I had like my first like Scott little Scott Stargell. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had my first little um, tiff that I've had in a long time, um, which people will be like, "Ah, oh, see, Brian Hardy's a horrible guy." Now that I'm giving the inside scoop, That's but I had to like go to somebody on the ATCW roster and tell them the other day. Yeah, I had to tell them the other day. Like, I watched your match. I loved it. You did this. I did this right before you did this in the match before. Don't ever use that again, or I'm going to stretch you. Oh, who did you say that to? And how did I not hear this story? I, I can't uh, say it. I can't say it. I can't say it. Well, I mean, I'll find out pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah well, all fair. We'll, we'll, we'll say it. Great, oh. great person. Honestly, great freaking person. Well, I will um, stretch you. I love that. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Shit. 
locker room hard. Straight up, I, was like, you. I was like, dude, like I, I was like, I'm cool with you. I think you're super talented. I was like, but please, I was like, this is why there definitely needs to be a monitor in the back. Cause I'm like, this is the problem here is that too many guys are like, Oh, I'll, I saw this, this, and this, and it looked cool. So I'm going to, and I'm like, bro, like you've had X amount of years in the business. I've had 15 years in the business. Like, you're gonna you're gonna not do this again. <laughs> or otherwise yeah, we're gonna have some problems. House, it definitely wasn't anybody from the house of Christ. Brian Hardy's gonna break your back and humble you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, god darn it. Now I gotta find out who it is. All right. So uh he's already right. on he's already on the horn with Timmy. Yeah, Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Hardy said he's gonna kick the hell out of our locker. <laughs> who, is, who is Brian Hardy stretching? <laughs> Oh, don't put him in there with uh, pretty Ricky. Don't whatever. But don't put him in there with. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, and we're figuring out. Anyway, yeah. Uh, as much as I'm not a big uh, CM Punk fan, I I hope wherever he ends up, he makes them better. And I, I want him to be. I want I want him to learn from his mistakes. And maybe his mis. I don't think his mistake is trying to give his knowledge. I think his mistake is his delivery. And I think I hope he yeah, changes exactly. his delivery and, um, you know, we'll go from there. He's also got to stay healthy too, because what was it? He had two world title runs of a whole five days because he blew out his bicep and broke his, what was he broke his foot or something? Yeah. Toe. Broke his foot. yeah that he actually broke his foot in a, like, uh, like a dynamite or something like the following. That was the very first later. Very first match he had after his title win, after the yeah, pay-per-view. I think he was tagging with FTR. Is that what he was doing? Yeah. So, all right. Well, whatever. We'll see where CM Punk ends up. Maybe he doesn't end up. Maybe he ends up on our <laughs> next topic. Maybe he ends up with the NWA on the brand new CW. Wait, whoa. They announced that finally? They announced it. Oh, breaking news. Oh. Breaking news. Billy Corrigan signed a deal with the C-Dub. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. What did they say when, like, when it's going to air yet? Not a fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fair. Well, I mean, that's still something to look forward to, you know, if you're an I NWA. Sent me a, who was it? Who was yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> I just saw that. Uh, yeah, so they just announced it. Uh, I, I mean, I can go back and look. Uh, I just caught it right before we went on. I saw that they announced uh, they, they were saying that he announced that he was with two different uh, organizations. So uh, he's going to be shooting on uh, YouTube. There's going to be a show on YouTube, uh, which is, I guess, his power. <laughs> there we go. That makes total sense. <laughs> that makes absolutely total sense. That, yes, that makes total sense. Okay. Scott, stop it, Scott, stop it. Isn't he anyway, driving somewhere? He probably, yeah, to uh, McDonald's. All right, so, yes, they, they, got, have, the, they, have, they got the Halloween buckets out, by the way, now. Oh, I'm so pumped now. And I need a, I need a bucket full of fries. <laughs> my, listen, my my Wayne's, I live in Wayne's, bro. I think disgusting. you better stay away from the bucket full of fries or we'll I, have I a, really new, a new host. Otherwise, when I do this, I'll be all, it'll be down here. <laughs> Uh, at the, Wayne, the 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 McDonald's here in Waynesboro. If you ask them for a Halloween bucket, I swear to all holy that they will come out with a Santa Claus bucket. They couldn't get they couldn't get a fucking order right to save their life, man. They're horrible. <laughs> hey, love you. All right, so uh, <laughs> that was a girlfriend. She didn't hear me say that. I broke up with her over the not laughing at Brian. <laughs> She's no, you still, got, you still got Carmelo in the basement. Right, yeah, she's my backup. Yeah, so uh, uh, more information to come. That <laughs> was just like a quick blip. You could stretch uh, him in a heartbeat. <laughs> and NWA power. Um, I, have you watched? Have you ever watched Billy Corgan stuff before? I mean, I, I I think he's got a good mind for the business. Uh, I heard him on an interview the other day. Um, I guess it was Fightful. Was he on Fightful? I think he was on Fightful. Um, and I mean, he's got a great mind for the business. He's been only in business for 15 years. It feels like Corgan's been around. I mean, he's with Smashing Pumpkins for a thousand years. Um, yeah, he 
He's really good to a lot of guys I know. I'm uh, I'm friends with Kerry Morton, Ricky Morton's son. Yep, he he's doing good stuff with him. He's doing good stuff with Brian Idol, um, who I've wrestled plenty of times and stuff. So yeah, I'm like I I tune in. I I watch everything as I always say, but I like yeah. literally tune into YouTube to watch NWA, and I just like that old school studio feel. I mean, that's that's my favorite type of stuff. Yeah, I like uh, I, I like it too, uh, and I like some, uh, we've gotten a lot of great people from NWA. We got Ricky Starks. Uh, we've gotten um, I th- what was the guy that used to be the Miz's shadow? Uh, Sand- Damian Sandow. Sandow's yeah. down there now. Um, which, by the way, greatest gimmick ever is <laughs> the Miz's baby dolls in the back. Baby Doll's daughter's down there, Samantha Starr. I've, oh, okay. I've, I've known her since I broke into the business, and um, oh, wow. she finally, you know, it's been years and years and years, and nobody would ever cut her a break, and she's finally at NWA. So yeah, so I think it's great that they have some of these other promotions that uh, the get the gets people out there that you wouldn't normally see. Like, would you know who Ricky Starks was? Right. I think, ML, I think it would be also great if MLW was broadcast around here. I don't know if they have a TV deal. Um, I don't <laughs> they, they, used to, TV deal. they used to air on Vice. Okay. So, But they would be like reruns of MLW would run like after Dark Side of the Ring or before Dark Side of the Ring, that kind of stuff. But I don't know if Court Bauer is still like – doing anything with any TV networks or whatever. But I mean, I've, I've watched the product numerous times. Sometimes it's hit or miss. Like they've got some really good stuff. Then there's other stuff that I wouldn't even, you know, I'd flip the channel and be like, yeah, I don't even care. Uh, looks like MLW is on major league wrestling presents. Okay. They got a something called, called fight lane. Car- Cardone is down there right now. Okay. Uh, um, Cardone is everywhere. I was going to say dudes everywhere. I, I just thought, uh, I saw yesterday a photo that said he's currently got nine titles and which is just underneath nine titles at once, which is just underneath Ultimo Dragon. Oh, well, if, uh, if, if, uh, what's, what's the, what's the promotion, um, with, uh, Nick Gage, if they'd stop screwing. Yeah. Yeah. If they'd stop screwing him, he'd have their belts too. Yeah. So, I mean, he's got nine. So if he, if he gets one more belt, he'll be tied with, Ultimo Dragon's record of like ten championships at once. At once. So, wow. and then I'm sitting here going, uh, I just got the USW title. I need to hurry up get the ATCW title, and then I need like eight other freaking titles so that way I can beat them. I'm ah! trying to stretch people. Though, <laughs> uh, are they counting the Internet Championship as a as a title for him? I think that I really think they oh, are. That's, that's so bad. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever, Cardona, you jerk. I, this, never isn't, forget, this isn't I'll vodka, never by the way. It. This is water. I was in question about that. I'm disappointed in you right now. I mean, how do you get your hair that color if you're not drinking straight liquor? <laughs> I had to I had to stay off it, man. Otherwise I'd look like uh nah, we won't go there. Never mind. That's all good. I was waiting to Chucky. I digress. Yeah. I was gonna say I was gonna say like an old school wrestler's name, but I once again I don't want that type of heat because I love old school wrestling. So I'm like, <laughs> just, just um um just whoever's dead zombie. Like yeah, Scott yeah. would do. Uh, yeah. Lufez is zombie. That's who you want. <laughs> yeah, his fantasy booking all star. <laughs> uh well, you know what? Now that I think about it, I guess if 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 certain person who was possibly going to be stretched for using uh a brian hardy move uh has signed all those ndas brian can absolutely uh say tell him that he can he'll stretch him it's it's not even like like i said it wasn't even a power thing as much as it is just a disrespect thing like i know i could stretch anybody like i know i could probably stretch like a guy that's like six five and 300 pounds like then, then all that stuff scares me it's the idea that I'm just like, bro, like just have consideration. I'm the I'm the loser because I love wrestling so much. I'm the loser that's standing at the curtain every single match, like, you know, and just yeah. trying to pay attention to what's going on and stuff. And I'm just like we're working we're working on the monitor situation. We're planning on building and doing something different with that back area. So we will have a gorilla at one point because I actually yeah. want to put Tim back there. Uh so he's out, so I don't have to look at his dumb ass. Yeah, no, it's it's like I said, it's cool. I just for me, I'm just like, oh man, like, pay attention. I'm like, and if you don't have time to watch the matches, at least go like ask somebody, like, hey, like I, I've, you know, it, it's just, ugh. 
Well, like we said, usually are. We're pretty good about we we try to talk, you know, the the pre show meeting and stuff uh, about uh, doing this and doing that, and make sure that you know if about chairs if, if there's a chair being used we're not using any other match but one match exactly like someone's getting color it makes we, everything's about being special so i yeah. i totally understand and for me like i said for me i think the biggest thing which i said to the to the gentle person was um was that uh it was my finish you know it wasn't just like some like signature i use here or there or whatever like you're using my finish as a <laughs> move that is just a filler for <laughs> your, <laughs> your finish by the way the sharpshooter. Excellent oh, okay. choice. Got you. I was thinking it was the uh the what's the what's it's his finisher, it's not the backstabber, it's the it's the front code breaker. Code breaker, thank you. Uh yeah, no. I used to use um I used to use the cradle shock. Um and then Chris Saban really started taking that again. I said no thunder bomb. And then I used the um, the backpack stunner for yeah. probably about two or three years, and then Ryback started using it, so I went uh, and stopped using that. And then I was doing the super kick nonstop until the Young Bucks came along and just started having super kick and parties. Everybody and else, I was like now <laughs> everybody uses super kick. And I said I'm done with the super kick, and then it, it turned sharpshooter real fast, and. Um, my family is really close with a lot of people in the Hart family. So, um, can you get them on here? <laughs> that's his famous <laughs> line. You think we could get them on here? So, it for me, it was just a personal thing where it was like it, it was my way of paying tribute to Brett and Owen, who my dad has wrestled so many freaking times and stuff like that over the years. And I was like, cool. And then I'm like, how many people are going to start using this again? You know, and and. I get that people would be like, oh, it's 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 out of tribute to Brett. It's like, did you ask Brett if you could use it? Because I did. <laughs> like, I, I, so I just I don't know. So that's that's my thing. So uh, Fightful Select just an, just announced that um, NWA Power will be on the CW. Power I want, is it I want the name dates. of their show? I want times. I want I, at least a month. Give me like a a like. Is it December? Is it January? March? Um, Brie Bella. Oh, um, I lost. I lost it. I lost it. <laughs> Damn it, Sean Ross Sap. Um, let me see if I can bring her back. Bring her back up, Sean Ross Sap. Love him, by the way. If you guys aren't, if you guys don't subscribe or go to Fightful, they're the best. Yeah, I, I watch a lot of his stuff. I think he's really, really knowledgeable, and I don't think that he bullcraps people. Uh, yep. Yep. Report NWA signs TV deal with the CW. Uh, that's all we have right now. That should be interesting. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm excited, boy. More wrestling, because I don't have, you know, five days a week is not enough for me. <laughs> dude i used to beg for just one night like just give me like one night of solid wrestling and now it's on every night of the week yeah, it's crazy it's crazy i i don't i don't I honestly don't know how i keep up and i don't it's too, i can't it's a yeah, lot it's I, can't watch, I, I don't get a chance to watch impact i don't watch i don't watch that show on friday night i don't even call it i don't even say what his name is anymore it's so bad it is so bad it might as well it should be called dark and dark Pretty much. Turn the TV off. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Who the hell wants to watch it at 10 p.m. after you've had two hours of SmackDown? Exactly. Oh, it's horrible. Anyway, uh, speaking of NBA and NBA, NWA Power, another guy who was their heavyweight champion is now is now the GM of of Friday Night Friday SmackDown. Night SmackDown. Yep. Nick Aldis. Uh, he Man, made his premiere on uh, on Friday night. Uh, he got, he was in the ring. He actually is weird how they, they, they brought him in. Um, trips was in the ring with Adam Pierce, uh, scrap iron, your boy scrap iron was in, he was, they were in the ring. They, I guess, um, trips gave scrap iron a, uh, or Adam Pierce, a, uh, just told him you're just going to run raw. He called it a promotion, but if you're losing a show, and it's you're kind of a promotion. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Much. Really Whatever. <laughs> anyway. So uh, and and then all of a sudden they said, uh, uh, "Well, Dom was out there Dominic. too." Dominic was there, and he was yelling about 
all the shit that's going on with SmackDown. And Trip said, you're yelling at the wrong guy. The guy you need to be yelling at is the new GM of SmackDown and Nick Aldis. And we looked. He he came from right, right by where the um the timekeeper was. Like, he didn't even get yeah. his own entrance. I think he crawled out from underneath the ring. I mean, oh, I don't know where. Honestly, I don't know where he came from. All of a sudden, no, no music, no, no grand thing. No, yeah, trumpets. that was kind of lame. It was very lame. <clears throat> I almost thought that Vince was back. He had a um a pretty amazing suit on though. Yo, we've we said this on whatever. What would we record last Friday? We Friday. We said this on Friday or Thursday or whatever it was. Nick Aldis, look at this guy is a million bucks. Like he looks, the guy can go. He's 30 couple years old, 37 years old. 30, like he's young. Yeah. Um, I think he's, I think he's about, I don't think he's 40 yet, but either way, even if he's 40, he looks yeah. like a million bucks. His suit game is the best suit game in the business by far the best suits ever. This guy. And, uh, <laughs> The, the I I just don't understand why they're not doing something more with him. I really don't. I yeah, don't it's kind of disappointing to see that. Yeah, I, that he's just a damn GM. Thank you. Now we did get some scrap. We did get scrap iron at one point to uh, you know, Mr. Yellowstone, uh, old Dalton. Uh, we did get scrap iron in the ring at one point a year ago or two years ago. Uh, I guess he got squashed by who did he get squashed by? I can't even remember. Roman Reigns. Is that who it was, Roman? Okay. So, yep. uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll get a Nick Aldis thing. I have no idea. Uh, but him being there uh, on on SmackDown is great. Uh, he got to interact with Jade Cargill a little bit. We had a little bit of an interaction with Jade and Charlotte, which was yep. pretty, pretty she, amazing, I think. She's turning up teasers of her debut almost everywhere because she appeared on NXT as well, I think on the uh Titan Tron. Yeah, uh there was a there was a vignette shot where um uh where Vince was in the bathroom and all you saw was the bottom of his feet and then you <laughs> saw then you saw uh, the door open and Jade opened the door and introduced herself to Vince. So I mean she she is absolutely she is absolutely <laughs> there we go. <laughs> She's absolutely Way to go, Scotty. Thanks, Scotty. She's absolutely everywhere. So, um, so back to Nick Aldis. Uh, Brian, would you love to see what, what, if, if you had your if you had Nick Aldis uh, in your wrestling organization without the A? Would you the USW? Uh, what would you make this guy just a GM? Uh, Nick Aldis would probably beat me for the title. So, and he would carry the tag titles. This guy would be the women's champion. This guy, uh, he'd, he'd, he'd be everything. Uh, <laughs> he'd have more belts. He'd have more belts in Cardona. That's for it's sure. it's so pathetic. Um, at the end of the day, because like I said, maybe I'm not your average Joe when I'm thinking about that type of stuff. But I'm like, yeah, if I had Nick Aldis and Cody Rhodes and Adam Pierce all under the same umbrella, that would be my heavyweight title scene right there. Like that would literally be my heavyweight title scene because I just. Once again, it's nothing against Roman, but it's it's kind of ran its course, you know. Yeah. What do you think, Rick? Do you think uh, how long before Nick Aldis is in the ring? God, I hope it's soon. Because, like you said, he looks like a million bucks, and I just don't understand why they're gonna sign him just to bring him in to be a damn GM. I mean, yeah. I'm just wondering who they're gonna get him um, in the ring with first when it finally does happen. You think the whole thing with Dom? May end up may end up leading to him versus Dom at some point. Could be, could be. Uh, I I think um, he steps down as GM and then introducing, returning back to the WWE, Mickey James. Also wondering how long that'll take before that happens. <laughs> uh, after this, when she loses the title to Trinity this weekend. I thought Trinity had the title. I, I thought Mickey James had it. I didn't, see, that's no. how much of impact I watched. I thought, I thought, I thought Trinity uh, lost to maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. See, I well, thought she got it from Deanna Perazzo. Either either way, Mickey James uh, come back to WWE. She's going with. She's gonna be with her husband. She's not gonna let this specimen of a man running around in the back with Jade Cargill and uh, Charlotte Flair. That's for sure. 
So, that's true. That's true. All right. So that being said, speaking of Mickey James, let's get a segue. We're going to go right to Impact. Let's talk about Bound for Glory. That's why we're here. Uh, Pay per view this weekend. Uh, let me bring it up. Uh, unlike, where is it at? Uh, unlike a uh, AEW, there's only what five matches. Well, the uh, last one, WWE pay per view had five. Uh, there's eight matches, and one of them is a call your shot got what call your shot gauntlet. So they put okay. a bunch of guys in there, and it's a, it's a gauntlet, it's basically a gauntlet match. And I don't know that they've announced the gauntlet match yet or who's in it. Uh, looks like all their main stars are locked up with other matches. So, so this smells like a pre-show match. Perhaps, uh, yeah, most likely a pre-show match. Oh, did did you turn on the light? I literally had. I'm like texting my kids. Could somebody please bring me a glass of water? Could somebody please bring me Yellowstone hat? Could somebody please bring me a ring light? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I'm like, thanks. Or I will humble you. <laughs> we will get, we're going to go through this uh, as knowledgeable as possible, which isn't much because we don't watch. Yeah, a lot we of don't impact. watch a lot of impact. Yeah, right. same. so Can't we're going to start out fantasy scores for this one this weekend. Oh, this will be this will be this will be interesting. Uh, I will I will be padding my lead after this because I you guys know even less than I know and I know nothing. And Damien will probably come in second with an unsubmitted paper. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, and Brian, we're gonna have to get you in the fantasy league next year. Uh, the January, next, next session, January, yeah. So uh, you'll you'll enjoy that. Yeah, that'll be that'll be your third belt you can collect. <laughs> See, I'm I'm like I'm one third of the way there almost. I think you I think you're 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 forgetting that I'm still gonna be here, Rick. So <laughs> yeah, but just remember the rumble starts. So that that could be an instant uh, money in the bank cash in there. And I'm coming for that Chucky Manson title too. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, it's it's always up for grabs. It's always, <laughs> always up for grabs. I carry with me everywhere I go. Right. I, it holds I his pants be, up. I, I will be debuting it tomorrow at another company. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> nice. We'll see how that goes over. All right. So uh, first, we got uh, uh, knockouts tag team, uh, knockouts tag team gold. I don't know what they call it that. Uh, it is a knockdown. Uh, the world tag team, the girls tag team championship. So, uh, MK Ultra, which is uh, Misha sounds like Miyake. a tampon. Yeah, it, it really, it really is. Uh, Masha Slamovich, greatest and, name ever. Is it Killer Kelly? I think it's Killer Kelly. Masha Slamovich versus Tasha Steeles and Diana Prazo. Now, I Oof. love Diana Prazo. Same here. I, I really like her. Uh, I, I like that she breaks the mold of what most women look like. Not an impact though, because they all they all look like they're about four cheeseburgers too, uh, too many. But, uh, as a woman's right. Well, I mean, remember she was in that's <laughs> horrible. Uh, she was in WWE and she couldn't keep like I don't believe she was as heavy as she was in the WWE. And she, just, I think that's one of the reasons why they released her is because she just couldn't keep her weight where they wanted it. I'm pretty sure. I don't know how that works where, for a dude. Where, Vin, where Vince wanted it. Yeah. I need, oh. you, to, I need you to sign this. Uh, uh, versus Tasha Steeles and Deanna Perrazzo. Uh Brian, who do you got in this match? Well, Deanna Perrazzo is the only name that I even recognize. So you got to go there. All right. We're going to get new tag team champions in, Brian says. All right, Ricky, what do you I'm got? I'm on the fence with this because, like I said, I love Perrazzo, but – Somebody with the name of Slamovich is it, it's like the greatest name ever. It is the greatest women's wrestling name ever. I, I, Misha, I don't Misha know. Slamovich. I don't know. Even I'm, hearing that it makes me think of Aaron Brockovich. So I'm yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take Slamovich. Yeah, if you get a chance, if you get a chance, check her, check some of uh, Slamovich's YouTube out. She just, um, she wrestles in Nick's, she was the women, I think she was a women's champion or a men's champion in Nick Gage's company. So, Hmm. Uh, yeah. So, and she did like a hardcore match where she's she shit beat out of her light tubes and that kind of stuff. She's absolutely out of her fucking mind. <laughs> yeah. So I I enjoy her. I really like her. So um, I, I'm going. I'm definitely. Uh, see, Impact's weird. They do some weird shit. Like when you don't think Slamovich is gonna 
they're gonna they're gonna lose. Why would they lose this, these titles to two people that just threw together? Then next thing you know, Deanna Prazo and Tasha Steeles is holding this title. I think Tasha Steeles and 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 and, and Deanna Prazo have had some issues in the past uh, when when Deanna was the champion. So uh, I am sticking with um, me, Masha Slamovich and uh, MK Ultra. I don't even know what. Oh, I guess it is Masha and Killer Kelly. That's MK. Oh, I get it. Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Michelob Ultra. Somebody's getting finished in this one, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. We got our tag team titles, the Rascals versus ABC. Uh, Aren't this the Rascals is, in ATCW? Uh, that's the Radical Stars. Oh, all right. Never mind. <laughs> the, the Rascals aren't as good as Willie and LA. That's for sure. Uh, ABC is um, Chris Bay and oh, what is his name? Ace Austin. Uh, so they are they are the impact version of the Bullet Club is basically what they are. Uh, so uh, who's got the belts here? So the Rascals had the belts. I think that the Rascals beat ABC at the last pay per view for these titles. Uh, Ricky, who you got in this? <sighs> Fuck fine, no, dude. Give me, uh, give me the Bullet Club guys. ABC. Brian, I'm I'm gonna say once again because the only name I even recognized out of that whole thing was Ace Austin, and <laughs> Owen informed me like a couple months ago that I was on like a bunch of shows with him when I was younger and I had no freaking clue like who he was. But if he's doing good stuff, then he's my pick. Must yeah, have been, he's, must have been drinking he's vodka. Yeah, Ace Austin's young. Ace Austin's like in his late twenties. Really? Say. Yeah, Must be back when Brian was drinking a lot of vodka. Yeah, that's not for water. Sure. Vodka and listening to Social Distortion. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I'm going. I, I, I'm I'm hoping that we get uh, Juice Robinson showing up here and interfering and causing the Bullet Club to win these titles back. That's what I need. I Jeez. need. Are, they, are I need the eight you guys? Roll of quarters. Are the AEW guys allowed to make impact appearances? So they uh, they have in the past. They did at they, one point. A little, a little crossover. And we're going to get to one of the matches where you you will have an AEW, a guy who is in AEW right now that is on this show. Uh, okay. So, uh, all right, we get a – Must be Kazarian or Daniels. No, no, no. Kazarian is there, though. Um, monsters, we got a monsters ball match. Uh, PCO versus Rhino versus Steve Macklin versus Moose. Brian, how old do you think uh, PCO is? I'm gonna probably say early 60s, like late, late, late 50s. If it's like 58, 59, but I'm thinking but you know like, who PCO is. Uh, he used to be one half of the Quebecers and used to wrestle my dad all the time. Yeah, yeah, I figured that he that your dad would have some sort of relation there. Now, which 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 uh, Rougeau brother is he? Is he Jacques, or which what's the other one? I don't think he's either. I think he's just his own. Um, I think he's own his own deal. He's he was John Pierre Levet or something like that, okay. like in WWF with like the um <laughs> had the, the pirate patch for a while. Okay. He wrestled like Bret Hart and stuff, but um. But Ray Rougeau was doing commentary at the time that the Quebecers were around. And then Jacques was, um, I guess, just coming hot off the Mountie thing into the tag team with uh, PCO. And this guy's absolutely crazy. Have you seen any PCO matches here lately? This dude is, yeah. a, this dude flies around like he's 130 pounds. Yeah. And it's, and it's wild because, like, I actually. Like a couple years back, the only reason I would even go to Ring of Honor shows when they would come to town here was because of PCO and because of Nick Aldis. Like those were the only two guys that I had wanted to see on the card, like when they would come to Baltimore. And um, PCO, every freaking time, man, he just puts his body on the line. He's like, for, you know, as I hate using that term, for as old as he is, but for as old as he is, um, you know, being on the second rope and doing like a flip bump on the outside, like cactus Jack style and stuff like that. It's like, what the hell, man? You know, it's wild. Second rope. This dude comes off the top rope through tables. <laughs> He's out of his fucking mind. There's so I always, I always thought it was cool. There's certain guys in this business. Uh, PCO is one of them. Dolph Ziggler is one of them. Um, guys that can take 
bump after bump after bump after bump after bump, and they just they never break, they never get hurt, they never like there are guys like that. It just I, I, I wish that I had the the resilience that some of these guys' bodies have. Uh, Zig is the ultimate. Thousand years old, man. Yeah, Dolph Ziggler is the ultimate bump and feed machine. Yeah. So oh my god, good. yeah. So One of the good. best. So good. And now he's a, you know, he's a free agent. So, um, I lost my, I lost my, I lost my spot. I lost my spot. There it is. Okay. All right. So, uh, Brian, who do you got in this match? PCO, Rhino, Steve Macklin, or Moose? PCO for sure. Got gotcha, PCO. Rick. Yeah, I'll take PCO. I'm going with PCO also. It is called the Monsters Ball. It is October. Uh, so this guy, I, I love, I love, I love. This is th- is this on Sunday night? Uh, I want to say it's on Saturday. Said, yeah, Saturday. I think you yeah, said. Saturday. Okay. Saturday. Unfortunately, Saturday. Uh, so um, X Division Championship: Chris Sabin versus Kenta. Hmm. That would be a match I would love to see. Two really great talents. I'm going to go Chris Saban. Yeah. Machine gun. Agreed. Machine gun. Agreed. Chris Saban. Uh, I'm going the other way. I'm going with Kenta. I'm going with Kenta. I, I'm going to go against the grain here. Uh, I don't know if Kenta is a mainstay now in Impact or if he's over here, if he's just over here for this show. But if he's just over here for the show, I don't. maybe we'll see. But I'm going with Kenta. Uh, we have... We have, what is this called? Impurtus? What is this? That's weird. Okay, this is just a match. Mike Speedball Mike Bailey versus Will Offspray. Is this for real? This is for real. All right, I'm going with Osprey, but, um, I mean, Owen Hardy, his favorite wrestler is Will Osprey, but he would probably give the fact that Mike Bailey's in the match, like, five stars instantly. Yeah. My kid's a huge Mike Bailey fan. I don't, I don't, I haven't really seen the guy work. So why? I don't know. Why? Yeah, me neither. I don't, I don't, I don't see the thing with Mike Speedball. I, I just don't, I don't see the, the allure, the whole karate thing. I don't, I don't, yeah. I, don't I don't, I don't know. It's just not for me. He's yeah. I, I, I don't know. I th- I'm sure he's probably talented. Like I said, if my kid's high on him, then he's probably talented as hell. But at the same time, oh, I just... just keep in mind though, your kid is also on uh, on pain medication. So yeah, that's, so he's high. That's very freaking true. So he's very high. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, who do you got in this match? I'm not going against Offspray. Yeah, never. Uh, this is uh, wh- who is it? Oh, the like we say when Sting's in a match, we go Sting never, never loses. loses. Yeah, the Sting never never loses match of the night. This is the Osprey never loses match of the night yeah. for sure. So uh, he didn't he didn't fly all the way over here to lose all to my him. points going on Osprey. All of them. I'm actually yeah every point I I actually uh yeah I'm yeah anyway I had a joke there but it <laughs> wasn't funny anyway all right so here we go we have. Uh, so you're correct. We had the women's knockout championship. Uh, Trinity versus Mickey James. Trinity is the champion. Uh, Mickey James has been talking about retiring for over a year now. Is this her retirement match? I have no idea. Um, I don't see any stipulations on this. So um, who do you got in this? Uh, Ricky, uh, Trinity, or Trinity? Give, give me, give, give me uh, Trinity. Because I, I honestly see Mickey James heading back to WWE with all this there. I believe so. Brian? I'm going to go with Mickey. Oh, why? Why? I don't think she's leaving just yet. Is um, it because you saw her naked? I didn't see her naked. Um, you're, what? you're trying to get Nick Aldis to beat me up now? I never saw that <laughs> in my life. <laughs> Did you take pictures? I did. I just, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, that made Scotty Soup Spoon happy. He's probably rubbing the underside of his belly. Uh, <laughs> like I said earlier, I, I believe Mickey James is heading back to the WWE uh, as possibly a women's agent. Who knows? Uh, she can still go, uh, but bring that cowgirl back to the WWE. And uh, with with Nick Aldis and uh, Trinity holds on to this title. Okay, uh, final match: the Impact World Championship. Alex Shelley versus 
uh, Josh Alexander. Uh, Alexander held this belt. Uh, he worked very hard, got this belt, and then ended up with a neck issue and was out. I think it was a neck issue. Then was out and had to relinquish the title. Then uh, after that, I forget who won the title. Uh, and it's been a couple of different places now. So um, who do you got in this, uh, Brian, um, Alex Shelley, or one half of the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley, or Josh Alexander? All right, I'll give you my insight behind this. Um, Josh Alexander, a few years ago when the pandemic happened, I received a pro wrestling crate box and it was the North autograph. Um, and I was like, I have no clue who either of these freaking guys oh, are. And no, I wait a minute. Don't go any further. Ricky, who was in the North? Oh, oh, ego. Right. That's right. Ethan yeah. Page. Yeah. yeah, that's right. right. Um, what did I? Okay. So perfect. Hold on. I'll let me finish. So what did I say to ego? What did I say to Ethan Page when we met him at the, at the, that you day. that you liked uh, Fat Ethan Page. <laughs> <laughs> I think he wanted you to said, punch me in the you face. Said, you said you liked Fat Ethan Page, and you also said that he uh, he could pass his um, Winter's dad. Oh yeah, my my granddaughter's uh, my granddaughter's father. He's a spitting image. Actually, I'll bring a picture of him up. But not yeah, fat, actually, not Fat Ethan Page though. Yeah, I told him. Well, actually, he looks like Fat Ethan Page now. But I told him, I said, "Hey, man, I just want to let you know, I like the Fat Ethan Page better because he, you know, he got into shape, right? He's in it. He got into yeah, shape. Yeah. I yeah. could not. I stood there for thirty minutes in that line and could not wait to fucking say that to him. <laughs> so when I when I saw the eight by ten out of the pro wrestling crate, I literally looked and went. I don't know who these guys are, and I kind of want my money back now just for this specific photo alone because I don't know what I'm buying right now. So then all of a sudden, you know, my kid's like, Dad, these guys are awesome, blah, 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 blah. You got to watch them sometime. Well, obviously, we know what happened with Ethan, um, and I found out once again that I was on a ton of independent shows with him years ago, and I didn't even know that I was on – exactly. There you go. Boom. Bang. No, that really that's, that's my granddaughter's father. Yeah, I was gonna say that could you could play him yeah, off. Yeah, bro, I showed that to him too. He's like, "Yeah, I don't look like that guy." <laughs> That's hilarious. And um, and I, I I got to a point where I was like, "Man, like I don't know." And then so anyway, the point was I I had no clue who Josh Alexander was, and then I kind of went back and I started watching some of his matches. I was like, "This dude is really really talented." Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna get the jerk award of the year for this. I don't necessarily know that I would ever consider him to be like heavyweight championship material. I uh, maybe X division, you know, that kind of stuff. But um, I don't know. I'm going to go with Alex Shelley on this one. However, I'll let you know my little Alex Shelley story is that Tommy dreamer always tells a story about how Bob Backlund broke his heart when he was a little kid and wouldn't sign an autograph for him outside of Madison square garden after he swore it's all right, kid, I'll come back out and sign your stuff right after the show and this and that. And he said, Bob, how about an autograph tonight? And Bob said, sorry, kid, I got to go, blah, 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 blah. And Tommy told him years later, Bob signed him an autograph and mailed it to him and apologized and whatever. So I'm waiting on that from Alex Shelley because years ago, Alex Shelley was standing. Um, he was walking out of the building. I'm I'm a fan. I'm not even in the business yet. And um, huge Alex Shelley fan, like big time. Like I'm like, hell yeah, dude. There's a Wawa right in front of the building that these guys are getting ready to wrestle in. I'm like, Alex, can you sign my figure, man? And he's like, oh, yeah, brother. Just hold on one second, man. I just got to go get a gallon of water from the Wawa. I'll be right back. I'm like, cool. So then all of a sudden he goes, he gets his gallon of water. He's coming back. I'm like, hell yeah, dude, 16, 17 years old. I know he's going to sign this shit. Here we go. Here we go. You know, all of a sudden he walks right up to me and I'm like, Alex, you said you were going to sign my figure, man. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be in at my merch table during intermission. Go over there. It'll be 25 bucks. And I, I instantly <laughs> crumble, bro. Like Brian Hardy crumbled. And I literally, and he was a heel that night. That was the night Joey Mercury came back to the independence and they wrestled each other, but he was a heel. And I was like, so broken hearted. And I was like, shit, man. Well, years, uh, years ago, probably about five, six years ago, uh, my buddies in the band teenage bottle rocket, um, which this logo right here is on the back of Alex Shelley's tights or whatever. They're like, Oh man, Brian Hardy's like the coolest. Like they're like hooking me and my kids up with 
free backstage passes to Warp Tour and all this other stuff and everything. And they're like, we know another wrestler. And I'm like, oh, you do? Like, who, man? And they're like, Alex Shelley. And I was like, fuck Alex Shelley, bro. Like, for real. Like, fuck Alex Shelley, man. And he was like, what? And I was like, they were like, did you have a bad experience with him? I was like, that guy fucking broke my heart when I was like 16 or 17 years old, man. So either way, at the end of the day, I'm going to say, Talent wise, I'll go with Alex Shelley in that main event match, but fuck Alex Shelley for real. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alex Shelley ever sees this. I just want to meet you, man, and like get your autograph for real. Like the little kid in me is still hurt by that shit. Okay, on the line is Alex Shelley. <laughs> bring him in. Bring him in. <laughs> uh, Brian would like to humble you. That's right. <laughs> Funny. Funny. Uh, I'm I'm actually I'm going with uh, I'm going with Josh Alexander. I think that his title run was too short and they're going to put that belt back on him uh, yeah I think, I think he deserves it and at this point fuck alex shelley <laughs> <So>. <laughs> i'm with you brian oh so. man all right well that's going to do it here for us at hardway uh brian tell uh, real quick brian tell us where you're going to be uh where you're going to be this weekend are you wrestling this weekend anywhere this weekend i am definitely going to be at atcw October the 21st. Bell time's what, 7 p.m.? I have no idea. I'm suspended. Uh, get your tickets now. Go on Facebook, ATCW, and um, we've got some craziness going on. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a, what is it, a, a scramble match or a gauntlet match for the uh, ATCW Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, so gauntlet match. Uh, you're in that, right? You're you're that's gonna be a tough one. You got some uh, I'm in that match and you um got some assholes in that match with you. <laughs> Tremor, Tarvin, and uh Robbie Wayne. So it will be Robbie uh Wayne. Interesting. Robbie Wayne is like that guy's a that guy's a savage. Yeah, man. Uh he's he's definitely lighting up the internet right now. There is there's three matches that I've had so far for ATCW, and two of them are title matches, so I wrestled Grizzly O for the title. Uh, I was unsuccessful. I ended up wrestling Ethan Cross. I beat him. And then now I have a title match for the second time. So hopefully I don't let this one slide by the wayside like it did last time. The new ATCW champ here with us. Uh, Breaking news. This will be his last title defense. (laughs) Her title shot. (laughs) Uh, It could happen. For watching, we don't want to see you bleed out on camera. Yeah, I just I think I did this a little deep there. Uh, I will be debuting at Voltage Wrestling tomorrow night. I will be accompanying the 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 man, the legend, the mercenary, AK, uh, down to the ring and uh, making sure that everything goes as planned, um, like we do with the House of Cross. Um, you haven't had to deal with the House of Cross yet, uh, Brian. So I'm sure and, it's. Um, cool. Honestly, I, I mean, I hope you don't. I mean, it would be. I mean, we could we could talk about uh, maybe some sort of partnership. Um, I don't know. We'll talk about it. Uh, if really Jeremy Stone, it. if Jeremy Stone gets in your way, you give me a call there, Hardy. <laughs> I'm coming. Tell look, Brian. Tell him he's got no idea. He's got no <laughs> idea the the power that that Jeremy possesses in those in those uh, string bean arms of his. Woo, what does he like get stoned? Does he smoke some weed and he like turns into Popeye after he eats spinach? I wouldn't mess with the dude. Oh man, you guys disappoint you me. You heard it. You heard it here. He's getting ready to fight four of the three of the toughest guys at ATCW and he has once zero part of Jeremy Stone. That's all you need to know, Ricky. So Oh, there's Mr. Puffers. Welcome to the welcome to the to dude. The he sat on my lap for like a couple of minutes earlier while I pet him, and like he was just here the whole time. Cameo cat appearance. Mr. Have Mr. you guys Puffers is always on? Are, are you busting off the air, or have you guys seen the trailer yet for the Iron Claw? So I I brought it up. I wanted to play it, and I can't. I got to figure out. I haven't learned that part of OBS yet, where I can play uh, something through OBS. But I'm gonna learn it this weekend. Uh, but I've I started to watch the trailer, but then I didn't. So uh, the Von Erichs trailer, Iron Claw. Uh, when is the when does that come out? It comes out December twenty second. We'll, we'll we'll let you work on it. We'll talk about it next time we're on. Okay. Hopefully you can get it up and running by then. But if if everybody hasn't done their homework and watched that trailer, go check out the trailer. A twenty four is putting that film out. Zac Efron's in it. Um, the guy who plays Lip and Shameless is in it. And yep. um. 
few others. And then obviously MJF is not in the trailer, but he's in the film as Lance Von Eric, who was the fake Von Eric. Oh, nice. We'll talk about more about that when we can get that thing up and running and everybody can see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will, I will probably just pull the link and put it up on our, put it up on the Facebook page or put it up. On, yeah. Won't be on YouTube cause we'll get copyrighted, but uh, I'll put it up on, uh, on our Facebook page for everybody can see it. But yeah, I'm excited about that. Where's that? When's the date? Is that December? December the 22nd. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I will, uh, it'll be on YouTube December 23rd, most likely. Um, is it in theaters or is it going to be on at in, in theaters? I, I, I suspect that it's probably going to honestly, if, if it didn't have Zach Efron in it, I don't think it would, but I think it's going to be a huge box office draw. I say is, Prince, is Prince Nana in it. Hit your dance. Is Prince Nana in it? <laughs> you never know, man. <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it here for Hardway Wrestling. I just threw my shoulder out. Uh, AK, Jesus. I might not be able to choke a guy tomorrow night for you. Hey, you still got a good arm to trip his leg when he's coming off the ropes. Hey, we don't do that. I don't. I don't need to do that. That's what the mercenary is for. I'm just there for moral support and to make sure there's smelly, non-deodorant, uh, no toothbrush-owning people of Waynesboro, Pennsylvania don't get anywhere near my man. I like AK. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't like AK? He's, he's, uh, well, Brian's going to learn soon enough uh, who AK is, or we'll, we'll introduce you guys sometime. I don't know if you guys have met. Maybe you can stretch him. I doubt it. I was going to say, as long as he doesn't use the sharpshooter, we're cool. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I see it coming, bro. I see it coming. Yelling Brian Hardy's name. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a sharpshooter. So, anyway, that's going to do it here for Highway Wrestling. For Brian, for Ricky, I thank you guys. Again, we are at 143 uh, subscribers on YouTube. Please, 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 let's get to 150. Like to see 150. By the end of the weekend, 150. If we do 150 by the end of the weekend, I am doing the next live shirtless. Jesus. I know. We'll, hey, we'll go you. down to 50, not 150. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let this baggy shirt for you. These. I don't know. Well, that, easy, well, easy there. Yeah. Well, my, uh, will we get banned from YouTube if they think my breasts are real? <laughs> I don't think in this day and age. I think you can okay. get away with it. Well, if I put a baby on one of them, then they can't do anything about it. That's Damn true. right. So he's going to steal one of Winter's baby dolls. That's right. <laughs> I'll have to angle that camera down. Oh, what? <laughs> Switchblade. <laughs> Switchblade. Switchblade. All right. I thank you guys so much. We're going to see you guys next time. On the hard way. I can never find the... the, Where is it?